Hey everybody, Tom Mason here, and uh, welcome to another video tutorial. I kind of feel like this, like I need a name for my show or something, like I, I want to have more of an intro or something to say to you guys, but uh, for now, that's all it is. Um, this is officially the very first video where I'm being supported by Patreon. Uh, big thanks, and I think I'll talk about it later in my video too, but big thanks to those guys that have come on board to help supporting uh, making these videos possible. I plan on doing it them with or without, but it um, it really helps to have the support. And even better, um, the support was so great that we've actually blasted through several milestones on uh, the uh, Patreon. So I'm trying to up the quality of the video production. I've got some new music. I'm editing on real software now, not just on my phone. And um, so that's actually one reason why it's a video is a little late because I had to figure out a couple things, but we're all on track. I uh, think I've come up with ways to streamline it so I should be able to edit easier or uh, faster and um, I've got the music, so very pleased about that. All right, now on to the tutorial. Hey guys, Tom Mason here with another sculpting video. Uh, today's topic is gonna be on sculpting long hair. So we're gonna go back and uh, I'm gonna use this figure again. Oh, I think I've lost focus. There we go, that's better. Anyways, so we're going to go back to this figure here and I'll show you some techniques for sculpting hair. But first of all, I wanted to sh long hair specifically, I wanted to show you um, how I got this to stick up nicely and, and so I'll be able to add material to it and it will hold. So as you can see, I already did it on this figure, so I'm going to do a quick little demo with this thing. So basically, pretend this is the head of the figure. And what you can do is before you lay on Fimo, as normal, as, as usual, I use Fimo for all my sculpting and, and that, you know, doesn't self-cure or anything. So you will have to uh, make sure there's something harder underneath to um, keep it stable. So this is what I do. Sometimes if it's really long hair, then it's a good idea to... Um, get a wire, a thin wire. It can be this thick. There's also some 28 millimeter brass wire that I use. It's a little thinner still. And you can just make essentially a little armature for the hair. But for this amount and what I'm gonna show you here, you really, all you need to do is get, uh, you know, have your, your little head here and then some additional green stuff. I like to make it kind of a triangular shape. And you want it to be a little thin, but not too thin, otherwise it can still remain very wobbly. And what you do is you press it on there and kind of move it into position like so. And then you let it cure. So you can see it's very close to that. If you want, um, you can lay on your skin of Fimo right there while it's still wet. It will get pushed around and everything, but that's okay. You just, you know, reposition it as needed and then uh, it will be cured and it will have the first layer of female on top of it. If you aren't comfortable with that, then you know again, just make sure this is nice and thin, wait for it to cure, add another layer of green stuff on top, and then um, add your female and you'll be ready to go. All right, now let's get on to the actual sculpting of the hair. All right, uh, as with most of my sculpting, the uh, main tools I'll be using today are the Wax 5, and the Color Shaper Flat Chisel. I use this for almost everything. Uh, as we get a little farther in, I'll probably end up using a um, needle probe or maybe my curved needle probe, which is the same thing. It's just in a hook shape, just lets you get in at different angles. So, but, so, once you've got your cured um, hair armature, if you will, bulked up there, that's where I like, the first thing I like to do is I like to have, pinch off some small bits of material and you can just lay on another large amount of clay and then kind of cut in the shape. But one thing I like to do is I like to make a few, add a few smaller pieces. You wanna roll them up into little sausages like so um, with tapered ends, at least at one end, if not both. And then I like to lay them on Oh gosh, I gotta be careful I don't press them to the face. <clears throat> Lay this on and then 
Move it into position. Oh gosh, I lost it. <laughs> it's a little, ch oh, shoot. it's a little chilly here right now. So the putty is a little cold. And when that happens, the clay, I should say, it tends to not want to be quite as sticky. Okay, there you go. So as you can see, add on this little strand here. I'll just press it on there a little more to get it to stick. I'll put on, let's put on another one. <clears throat> I'll try and hold it so you guys can see it. Okay. And as you can see, I've kind of got it going. Notice I've got it. They're both kind of headed in the same direction here towards the end. But towards the back, I purposely separated them. They're not, you know, just, they're not perfectly aligned. You know, this one swooping like that and then another one right next to it. You know, they're diverging from each other. And that's important because one of the biggest things to make your hair look interesting and fluid, and especially in this case, as you can see, it's, you know, it's, it's up, it's fl flapping and flying around. And one of the most important things you can do is start by creating these large shapes before you try and do any sort of little details, little hair strands or, or anything. And um, if you just kind of lay down a flat bit and, and then start going with the details, you lose a lot of action and um, there's a lot of opportunity to put some interesting shapes in the hair. So that's the key. Lay in as many of these larger sections as you can to kind of create clumps of hair because that's how hair works you know it tends to want to bunch up into, into different clumps and uh, that makes it look interesting so put one more in here and that one follows the contour of the other a little bit more but but see how what I'm doing here is I'm going to start making this one kind of look like it's going to tuck underneath that. And we can put a little bit more material down here at the base of her neck just so to cover that up because she'd have a little bit more, a little bit more hair there. And that can be part of this larger strand or it can be kind of its own um, little wisp. There. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, add a few more pieces and smooth this out um, and uh, might have this on time lapse, but either way, I, I won't be talking. So just kind of watch it, enjoy, and then I will um, come back and talk in a minute.
Okay, once you have all of the main strands laid in there and smoothed out, blended together, for the most part, I mean, you can leave some separated segments, and you should, because that's kind of the whole point of this. But you don't want to have any um, distinct gaps or, or lines like that. Anyways, then you can do some last minute refining. You just want to make sure it's nice and smooth. You don't want any fingerprints on there and rough spots. But then once you do that, that's when you can start to go on with the finer tools like this one. It's a little small spoon tool and you can start to add in a little bit extra shapes. And actually my favorite tool for this is this uh, a needle probe tool. You can, you can use a straight one or I have one that's severely bent like I mentioned earlier. I actually made one that's just slightly bent. And, and the reason for that is when you go in at certain angles like this, when you're doing flowing curves, um, sometimes you want this, but sometimes you don't. And, and if you go in like, see, it's the tip, the point is what really digs in to that and makes a, a fairly harsh line. But if you have a slightly bent one on such a small needle, and this was actually just made um, with a, uh, a pin from a dress shirt you know with the little balls on the end I just put it in this brass rod put it in place boom there you go anyways but since I made this a slight bend on the tool now if I press in it's a, it's a much softer rounder um, instrument because the point is pointed up instead of at this angle poking straight in so that can be very helpful Anyway, so as you notice though, you know, I'm actually just redefining uh, a bit of the material that I had laid down, oops, let's get on camera, that I had laid down before, maybe putting in a little bit more, but the shapes are still relatively large. And uh, that's a bit of a stylistic choice. I prefer to do my uh, hair a little more stylistic rather than every single strand. There is a technique, it's really cool. If you do wanna do hair that looks really fine where you're not defining the uh, clumps of hair, but you're actually showing what appears to be every strand of hair. And that's actually that's actually something that's really good to do if you're doing um, hair that's very straight, because that can look rather boring um, and it tends to not clump up like you're seeing here with this hair waving in the wind. But I'll cover that in a later video, because um, it just isn't something that would work for this particular figure, and uh, this is a valid uh, and good technique to learn anyways, too. So you can keep the strands that we've been making nice and bulky, but as you see, I almost started to make a little bit of finer hair when I just accidentally pressed in a little too hard. There's my right tool with this probe here and it kind of created a much smaller strand so you can keep going over this and just kind of following the contours and adding just a little bit more so you know there's a little strand there's a little strand here but instead of going up to the tip I'm actually gonna have it come down a little bit so it you're basically you have these large interesting chunks and shapes but they end up being made a little more interesting by by their smaller shapes, but it's essential that you try and maintain the uh, larger form. You don't want that to be destroyed. You still want that to be a noticeable element because when you're sitting, when the minute, especially when, when you're gaming, if these miniatures, you know, are being cast and played with other people, you know, we're holding this really close. It's very large on your screen. It's very large in your eye when you're holding the miniature close, but when it's on the tabletop, you know, it's gonna be far away. So it's important to allow these um, larger, more distinct shapes to stand out. So uh, it's, uh, I also tend to, if I, if I put in a little extra strands to show them off, I tend to put them towards places where they'll bunch. So um, I guess I should say real quick, the reason why I'm not putting hair on top of this character's head too is because she's gonna have a bandana, uh, but, um, you know, so up under here where the bandana comes in, you're going to have the hair start to, to tuck a little more. So 
I, uh, and this is you know kind of the same way you might treat folds. You you tend where where it would be bunched, you add just a little bit more detail to kind of accentuate that there's there's pressure and something going on. So I'll bring that down a little bit. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm almost done with this. This I won't probably won't take it much farther, but I'll work on it a little bit more and just talk about a couple of things. So um, let me know what you guys think of this new setup. I th think I've done one, maybe one tutorial with this setup, but I, I've adjusted a little more. Um, do you guys, is it okay with this cutting mat showing or does, uh, does everything look stand out better for you? Is it easier to follow when I had that, the, the black mat instead? Um, I do prefer this because it's just on a working surface, but, but I can understand why the black might be. So you guys tell me and um, let me know what you think of that. Um, also, you know, um, this video should have my first um, set of new music. So, um, you know, my last video was when I talked about and launched my Patreon. Well, uh, that, th and there were several milestones on it. Uh, and um, I've got three awesome patrons so far, and they supported me enough that I blew past, I think, three milestones. So I've, I got some editing software. I have, um, I'm working on making little splash images for the uh the videos so they're a little easier to tell when they're being searched what they are when they're being searched or viewed you know rather than just seeing the title and you know they'll stand out as kind of you know my my channel my videos and um and the, also i was gonna i got some uh, custom music so i'm not just using the uh stock iphone iMovie sound so let me know how you like that. So I, I'm hoping that I can kind of pick a one standard tune to kind of, again, anchor my channel and make it a little more obvious to people that it's uh, my thing. But, you know, I'm sure it'll end up getting switched up from time to time because it gets boring hearing the same thing all the time. So, But hopefully it'll be nice to not be hearing uh, stock iMovie sounds and whatnot. Okay, so there we have it. I hope you can tell there. As you can see, you know, they're, they're very large strands, but when you look at it in the, in the bigger picture of it, when it's pulled away, it, you see the clumps, you see strands, and your brain just tells you, oh, that's hair. It's, it's flowing, it's whipping, doing interesting things. And uh, yeah, a lot of the, these are good, good techniques. You can use this on short hair too. If it's not this long, but it's flowing, or even if it's just a little on top. But I, I do plan on doing another video where it's focused on short hair, maybe uh, hair for ma uh, male hair and things like that. And um, yeah, so post a comment below, like the video, and tell your friends. Thanks for watching, and keep sculpting.